But why you fucking with me? Stop fucking with me! Hello. Today, while I'm writing the script to answer the rest of Venom Fang X's video, I'm going to go through the six-part interview of Ravi Zacharias and systematically, systematically refute it. I also plan on, in the future, to respond to Venom's other mit movies. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Ravi Zacharias' video. I'm going to skip about to 239 because that's just all introduction and he makes no points and it's just all him being egotistic. Let's go through about 240 um, to 415. I'm going to skip through that as well because it's just all history. But he makes one argument in here. And he says that this is now the age of atheism. But uh, And he talks about Nietzsche. But this is not the age of atheism per se. It's more about the humanist mindset. Uh, humanism is different than atheism uh, in the sense that it does not focus on the existence or non-existence of God. Uh, it's just about uh, saying that it's trying to pull out human uh, man's potential and stuff like that. Also, they mis they mispronounce they both mispronounce Nietzsche's name throughout this entire movie. It gets kind of annoying. Uh, let's go through 418 to 430. When he spent the last 13 years of his life in an insane asylum. So this is not only the century of atheism in a sense, it's also the century of extermination because it logically flowed from a godless worldview where we dehumanized people in the process. Okay, before this, he says that this is the bloodiest century, and then he goes through how we dehumanize people in the century. But this is completely untrue. The bloodiest century would possibly, most possibly, be the century in which Ravi's own god killed the entire population of the earth, both animal and human, except for Noah and his incestuous family. Um, let's go on to what he says next, which is about... N at. Four minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, let me just try to get... There we go. Reality. And uh, Nietzsche uh, also was a syphilitic and uh, died from the effects of that as well. What he said before that, he said that this is the age of the grossest immorality. Sorry, I cut off there. Um, okay. Just because the humanist mindset has made a regrowth in this past... Uh, half century, that does not mean it's in a cause and effect relationship with immorality. Um, look at like the <laughs> flying spaghetti monster graph of global warming and pirates. Just because pirate the pirate population has decreased over the past half century and global warming has increased, that does not mean that the decrease in pirate population caused global warming. Also, I don't know about you, but what happened at Sodom and Gomorrah was pretty freaking disgusting. Um, yeah, not only the, those guys trying to sodomize his son, but also um, her being, uh, Lot's wife being turned into a um, assault pillar. That was pretty disgusting, and yeah. Let's go on what he says next. About 5.15, he says that the world, Robbie says that the world has been devoid, has become devoid of meaning. Um, this is not so. In fact, a human, the humanist mindset gives more meaning to life because it focuses on human potential and the fact that you can give yourself more, you can make your, uh, I'm sorry, and the fact that you yourself can make the world a better place, not some invisible God making the world a better place. Also, in the humanist mindset, the ultimate goal is not to get yourself into an afterlife. It is to, get, to, make, to, make, is to make the world a better place for those who come after you. So it's not just... In the theist mindset, it's more about a nihilist view. A nihilist, like, trying to get yourself into heaven. Um, well, in the humanist mindset, it's not just about yourself, it's about uh, humankind as a whole. Um, let's go on to 5.30 through 5.45. This is where Ravi just talks about Nietzsche, how Nietzsche recanted some scripture on his deathbed, and how he said it was like the word of God. Um, okay, Ravi, I seriously expect it better than you, better from you. Um, just because someone sputters scripture on his deathbed does not mean it's the word of God. And just because I say, for example, Matthew 10.34, uh, how he's, uh, I believe that's the one where he says that he comes not to bring a, not to bring peace, but to bring a sword. Um, just because I recanted that does not mean it's the word of God. Okay, um, let's go to 5.50. This is where I get pretty ticked off. Um, the host guy... I don't even know his name. The host says, here, let me, let me get you to listen to this. 
they go to school, whether it's high school or college or graduate school, and they hear atheistic professors spout their atheism as if it is absolutely beyond controversy and has been proved beyond argumentation. And also they get... Okay. He gives no sight on this whatsoever. Absolutely none. He cannot provide you one single time that this has been that this has happened. I mean, I'm sure it's happened before, but maybe in a theology class, not in like a physics class where the physics professor is trying to convert everyone to atheism. Um, also, he later says that about 614 that, quote, they give the impression that they are completely happy in their godless lifestyle, end quote. Um, I don't know about that guy, but I'm pretty freaking happy. Um, thanks. Uh, thanks for saying I'm not happy when I don't believe in God, but I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, I like life. It's the only life I'm going to get. I might as well live to the f its fullest. Um, from about 6.15 to 7.15, this is just about an egotistic rant about where Robbie has, I almost called him Robbie Tavi, about where Robbie has debated and he goes through how about how he's debated at like he, Harvard and Cornell. And then about at 7.19 to 7.26, he says that in an atheistic world, life breaks down. But how so? He does not tell you how it breaks down or why it breaks down. It doesn't. I, for example, am perfectly happy. I do what everyone else does. I go to school. I take tests. I am just a normal person. My life is not breaking down because of atheism. He provides no source, no example at all of life breaking down because of atheism. And in fact, life breaks down even more because of Christianity, i.e. the Crusades, the Holocaust, uh, and, and homophobic and anti-Semitic uh, violence. Uh, I, he, this does not sound like a stable society to me. And then about 727 through 819, this is more egotistical rants about where he's been invited to debate, not actually debated. And then um, from about 827 to um, 9 or 920, he gives you some different um, definitions. I'm just going to go through these. 827, he gives the definition of atheism, which is wrong. He says that, quote, an atheist is a person who believes there is no God, end quote. This is untrue. Those are only strong atheists. A weak or a soft atheist is just a person who lacks the belief in God. That is the least percentage of most, or the least percentage of most people are strong atheists. Um, and then at about 829 to 915, he talks about agnostics. And he says, here, let me try to get this to you, what he actually says. It's at about 829. Here, let me get this. Agnostic is a person who says, I don't know if there is a God. And by the way, folks, agnostic from Greek is exactly the same word as from Latin, ignoramus. And... Uh, and they will probably be more willing to say they're an agnostic, and you might respond by saying, well, I'm sorry to hear that you're an ignoramus. Okay, he gets this from a false premise. He is getting this from, he thinks the word agnostic comes from the Greek word um, unknown, for unknown, but this is not true. The, the word agnostic comes from the word gnosis, which means knowledge. In Latin, knowledge is the words agnito and consentia, not ignoramus, which means unknown, but the word agnostic, I mean, it makes sense, but the word, the word agnostic does not, epistemologically, does not come from the, uh, the word for unknown. It comes from the word knowledge. And then from about 916 and 920, gives the definition of pantheist. I'm not going to refute that because that's pretty much true. Then, from 9.21 to about 9.42, he's just the host. I'm just going to call this guy host. Um, he's showing off Robbie's book, Can Man Live Without God? Um, I shall answer, yes. Um, I'm living fine. And has anyone ever actually read this book? I n never heard of it. Um, is it any good? I might have to check it out after I read the five books I just got from the library. And then about from 943 to the end, he says that communism has tried to prove that it's possible. I find two things wrong with this. First of all, there's never been a truly communist state. Um, Russia was Stalinist and China was Maoist, and but now China's more capitalistic than communist, quote unquote. Um, and second, people still retain their indigenous religions when there was a Maoist regime active in China. Um, they kept their like their Buddhist religions. They kept their their Confucius. Confucianism, they kept Taoism. So, 
they actually were not living without God. They were living with their gods. And also, this the first part ends. The first part of six ends with the uh, the host saying, "Why not? Why doesn't it work?" Um, I guess I'll get to that next. I'll answer Robbie's arguments in the next video when I write a script for it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.